Brad Gilbert joins us, of course, one time coach of Andre Agassi and until recently coach of Andy Roddick. Agassi's hip is the issue here. He tweaked the tendon at a tune up exhibition event here in Melbourne. Seemed to be okay when he tested it on Saturday against Hemman, but you'll watch his movement carefully in this match, I'm sure. I think you really see in the first set if, you know, he lets it go a little bit. I think there's no holding back for Andre. And, you know, if the hip is good, you're going to see him let it fly. Because, you know, a couple of years ago, when Andre was feeling 60, 70%, he'd go home. He doesn't like to play when he's not 100%, but there's no time like the present for him. I think he's going to play through it, and good things are going to happen for him. You told him you, you, you can save your health for retirement, but at this point in your career, seeking that one more major title, which would be his ninth, you say you got, you got to put that aside and just go for it. you got to put it aside and go for it, because I think these courts are perfect for Andre, and he relishes the opportunity, unlike any of the guy, other guys in the top 10, at getting a shot at Federer. And Federer would be in the quarterfinals. Andre Agassi in the same quarter of the draw. And he gave Federer a couple of tough matches a year ago. Inside, Cliff Frasdell and Patrick McEnroe. Looking for one more, Chris. And uh, if he wins one here, I don't think he's going to stop there either, Patrick, because uh, he is motivated, Agassi. In, in terrific shape. Well, he's lost some weight, actually, over the holidays. He worked extremely hard. He's leaner trying to take a little pressure off that hip which has been a problem for him in the last really the last about 18 months has struggled with it a bit last year in fact that's what forced him to pull out of Wimbledon last year so this soon to be 35 year old who has won the Australian Open four times begins his quest for another one. He is heading toward Roger Federer in a quarterfinal matchup, if they both get there. Well, he is the guy that really tested Federer at the U.S. Open last year. Agassi able to take Federer to five sets. By far, Roger's toughest match at the Open. No problem with the hip, obviously. <laughs> Great movement there from Agassi. Dieter Kindelman is from Germany. He qualified to get in. He very nearly lost his uh, last qualifying match, but came back. He was down 6-1, 3-1 in the last round of the qualifying. 7-5 in the third. Excuse me, Cliff. You know, I sort of pride myself on knowing all the players, you know, and going down the draw. So this guy, Kindelman, who's this guy? I don't feel so bad, though, now, because I asked a couple of the German players about him. Kiefer and Haas. They never heard of him. <laughs> so I, it made me feel a little bit better, you know? You're supposed to know about these players. You're Davis Cup well, I know. So I was feeling a little, a little shaky. It's now 30-all after that uh, winner from Kendallman. I did find out, though, however, that apparently his two-hand and backhand is his best shot. And we saw a nice one there. I watched him practice yesterday, Patrick, and he, he's, he's got good groundies off both sides. He likes hard courts, by the way. Well, nicely done by Kindleman, testing out that movement of Agassi with the drop shot there. Showed some good anticipation. And he knows Agassi well, Kindleman, because he said he idolized Agassi growing up. So he's obviously spent some time watching Andre, and he, he read this two-hander from Agassi, bunted it up the line. Yes. Kindleman playing against one of the five players in history that has won every one of the four Grand Slams. Agassi starting out getting to the final of the French Championships when he began, and the French was the last Slam title that he won.
Well, I guess he's looking to make a, a statement early with his movement because he normally you wouldn't see him spend that much energy running around his backhand to hit the forehand, but he clearly wants to send a message that he's feeling just fine. Thank you. Break point. Pretty gutsy play there from Kindleman. Break point down. Second drop shot of this game. Wins the point both times. Well, I think you're right. I think he's testing Agassi's hip. Day one crowd. See a very nice menu of players starting out with Serena Williams and then Roger Federer, Andre Agassi now. Game point, Kendallman. And the German holds. One game for love. The Kendleman. And a friendly hello to you again, everyone. Cliff Dreiser alongside Patrick Mackinac. The first thing that's really got to be said about Andre Agassi is that 35 years old, <laughs> just around the corner, and he's still playing. You know, it's amazing because last year, obviously, he played pretty well here, lost to Safin in a five-setter, and they really struggled throughout the first six months of the year. And I think Andre was questioning himself, how much longer do I want to go out there? And then what does he do? Has a tremendous summer. He goes to Cincinnati. He beats Hewitt. He beats Roddick. And then he plays Federer very tough at the Open. I think that re nude in, in Agassi the confidence that he knew he could go out there and continue to compete in the majors and you can see he has had so much success here at the Australian Open winning this title four times and uh, he didn't even play here Agassi until 95 was the first time he set foot in Australia for this event not wanting to make the trip down under and boy has he regretted that because uh, as Brad Gilbert Noted earlier, I mean, this surface tailor made for the Agassi ground game with the medium pace, the ball bouncing up so it sits in Agassi's strike zone. And he's really been able to use his fitness over the years to, to run guys ragged on this surface. Andre Agassi has always said that he enjoys the process of working out and working hard to be the best. 34-year-old from Las Vegas has got he's an outstanding hardcourt record. His favorite surface, ranked eighth at the moment. Forty-four and four here in Australia, his best slam. Had a break point in first game on Kindleman's serve, but uh, did not convert. Game point, Agassi. He's got 59 career titles. Made over 30 million dollars in prize money, and that's just a, a drop in the ocean for yeah. him because he's made so much in endorsements. And he's given so much as well. His charities in the uh, Las Vegas area, particularly, built his own school. <laughs> certainly appreciate Andre Agassi down here in Australia. This crowd does. I point out, Patrick, that the crowd that you see here on, on this Rod Laver Arena uh, is just a very small part of the crowd that are at this Melbourne Park because there's the Vodafone Arena and there are other stadium courts outside as well. 
Place is jammed. Agassi plays that sort of relentless baseline game, uh, very similar to the way that Jimmy Connors used to play, and that Connors used to go after his opponent's strength early in matches. And Agassi doing that, going after Kindleman's backhand side, trying to break that down. And if he can break that down early, then the young German's in a whole lot of trouble, again going at the backhand. Break chances for Agassi. Kindleman's from the Munich area of Germany. Oh, terrible drop shot there. <laughs> Andre tries to shake that one off. He's selling himself to hit that one. He really bricked that attempt. Still break point for Agassi. Sales. This is a smart start here from Kennelman. These drop shots could take their toll on Agassi. Yes. Well, they may take their toll more so on Kendallman, Cliff, because on this court with the rubbery bounce, the ball bouncing up, you've got to play the drop shot perfectly to get away with it. And he's been able to do it. But that's a very risky proposition as this match goes on because Agassi will start to look for it. Not want to be counting on uh, a drop shot <laughs> going <laughs> against Agassi on this court. Oh. Kittleman started playing in '99, so this is his sixth year on tour. It's his first Grand Slam match. Finished in the top 200 for the first time last year at 184. As we said, he qualified. Oh. Yes. If that's the good news, the bad news is then the first round he faces Agassi. Seems to be handling it pretty well. Really? He's, he's had a good, pretty good looking start. The largest crowd he's ever played in front of was 4,000 people. It's just about one side of the stadium here. Uh, Challenger Tour is the minor leagues of tennis, and he played uh, a bunch of matches on the Challenger Tour last year, 28 and 18. He won two titles, both in Germany. Oh. Yes. It's like a guy who can hit about, you know, 330, 340 in double A. Let's see what he can hit when he gets to the, to the big leagues. Big league pitching is a little bit different.
easy. Those are the kind of points that Agassi's played on this surface more often than anyone else. And that's why he's able to wear people down because he can just continue to pound away on this court, varying the degrees of spin he wants to put on the ball. And the clean bounce on this surface, the true bounce, enables him to really measure his shots consistently. And because this court, Cliff, is, you know, we've talked about is, is quite a bit slower than the U.S. Open court. It's tougher for guys to, to serve Agassi off the court in, in these conditions. Obviously, at the U.S. Open, you run into a, a Sampras in his prime or a, a Safin guys that can serve big. You know, that troubled Agassi. Here, it's harder for players to do that to him. Dieter Kittleman holds 2-1. Agassi when we come back. Two games to one, Dieter Kittleman over Andre Agassi. Agassi about to serve. Agassi uh, almost uh, thought about pulling out of this event, apparently, because he played an exhibition match here, Ku Yong, in Melbourne against Roddick. Here he is talking about it. Yeah, I strained a tendon. You know, I went and took an MRI when it happened. I wasn't sure what was going on. I felt a sharp pain, and then it was followed by some stiffness that wasn't allowing me to sort of move. And I was pretty worried about doing something uh, uh, worse to it, so when had an MRI, it turns out to be a tendon, sort of micro tears in the tendon, so that's more manageable than a muscle, thank goodness, and with heavy anti-inflammatories and some treatment and, you know, being a little smart over the last few days, it's, uh, I think it's going to hold up. Very articulate, Andre Agassi, he's become a sports spokesman, as you mentioned already, Patrick, he's very much into uh, charity work in Las Vegas particularly. Building a huge sporting empire, Agassi. Greg Norman out here in yeah. Australia. Well, everything Agassi does that he's involved with, he, he does absolutely first class, and he's involved. So you know, his, his manager and his good friend, Perry Rogers, and he have just put together a, ga a great game plan over the years where Agassi started his foundation. That event is that he has in the fall is just an amazing event in Vegas. He gets top level performers. <laughs> every year and just raises incredible amounts of money for his charity and opened his preparatory school about two years ago now, I think. Multi-millions. Yeah. Coached by an Australian, Darren Cahill and of course, he's worked with Gil Reyes, his really good buddy, Killer Cahill. There's Gil Reyes there, who's a uh, friend, mentor, trainer, brother, father, I mean, you name it. Also Las Vegan. They met when uh, Agassi, just sort of on a lark, went to the, the gym where the UNLV, the Nevada Las Vegas basketball team, was training. And Gil Reyes was the trainer for the, the basketball team back in their heyday. And uh, I guess he became close to him and or, or started to talk to Gil and said, you know, could you help me get stronger? Gil said, I don't know anything about tennis. And Andre said, don't worry, I, I got the tennis part covered. <laughs> and they have put together just an amazing record. And uh, Gil told me earlier today, I saw them and they had just come off the practice court. And Gil said, he best training sessions they've ever had this past year, coming up on Andre's 35th birthday. So the best they've had ever, he, and he, they always like to talk about the numbers, you know, he's a beat his right. numbers, meaning <laughs> on, the, on the bench press, on the this, on the that, doing all the tests, his body fat, lowest ever. Well, Agassi says now that the tennis part is, I mean, as you said, he's got that under control. Now the only thing that can really make a difference, get him better, is his fitness level, and that's why he's worked so hard on it. Hey. So 
Gil, by the way, is part philosopher. He's a very wise friend he's a, he's to a have. He's sage, isn't he? Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at this. Most titles after 30. Laver with 44. Rosewall, Ash, Connors. And now Agassi with 14. Well, in Labour Rose War days, the guys didn't, they, they just kept playing. Most of them, and, and a lot of the players were quite a bit older. Nowadays, of course, it's become a younger and younger man's game. This is where the Agassi return starts to pay off, that he's taking it early, putting Kindleman under pressure. And the German, the youngster, throws in his first double. Break point. Fifth opportunity for Agassi to break here. This really experience pays off for Agassi, Cliff. You see, on the previous point on break point, he, he sort of mishit the return a little bit. He tried to take it early, which is his nature. But that time, he stepped back a little bit on the second serve return. He moved back. He's not, he doesn't make those same mistakes anymore. You know, he's learned how to adjust. He used to be stubborn in that way. He continued to look to just pound the return. Yeah, we always used to say that uh, he didn't have a plan B. Well, he does right. now. Very careful, clear thinker on the court now. But as you mentioned uh, just a second ago, he's had his chances to break and hasn't. Yet. Kindleman's got sort of a, an ugly looking first serve though. His balance is off. And that's just vintage Agassi there, attacking those second serve, going down the line, and then measuring this forehand. Here's the return serve. Look at him inside the baseline that time, and then again, using the positioning inside the baseline. He gets under that ball beautifully. Another break point. See him starting to move Kendleman around as well, forehand to backhand. This is going to be a day that Kendleman will remember. And I don't mean playing against Andre Agassi, but he's going to work harder than he has ever worked in his life on the court. Another chance for Agassi to break. Is eighth. And the service break, Agassi will serve at 3-2 when we come back and the crowds are having fun. Some of the critters that are peculiar to this island or this continent of Australia. This is the Australian Open for this year. It's the first Grand Slam of the year. And you're watching Andre Agassi who has won this title four times already. He's the number eight seed for this two-week event. Taking on Dieter Kindleman of Germany. He's got the breaker serve leading 3 2 first set.
Oh yeah. Heck of a shot there from Kindleman. He did a little road work in that point. This young German playing in his first Grand Slam. Came up with a beautiful runner there. You notice Agassi right up to the line looking to play quickly. Trying to take advantage of running his opponent around. Success again with the drop shot. Four for four for Kindleman with that play. of Agassiz's game, I think, over the years that has, that has helped him maintain this level, Cliff, is that Agassiz's been able to beef up that serve just enough so that he can win himself some cheap points at crucial moments, go for some big serves. Some players are just born with a, with a great arm, you know, like a great pitcher in baseball, Cliff, or in your sport, cricket. Right. You know, oh. you know, <laughs> it's you know, been a long time. Yeah, Sampras and Ivan Isevich and Krychik. I mean, obviously those guys worked on their serves, but they had just a natural motion. Agassiz more is a, is a workhorse of a serve. He uses his legs a lot to get power. <laughs> and he's had to really build himself up in the lower body to get that extra pace on the serve. Ninth time that he's played here at the Australian Open, and he's won it four times. 44 and four singles record. And uh, you, were, you were talking about it earlier. The first time he came down here, he beat Pete Sampras in uh, the Grand Slam final. He said to himself then, man, I, I, yeah, I should have been here a lot <laughs> earlier. And you know, you can always sit there and say to yourself, well, if Agassi had come down early, he would have won this thing eight times, or you know, this and that. If he'd been as focused back then when he first started out, he would have done this. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe he wouldn't be who he is now. Maybe he wouldn't be the guy who's so focused now, so determined to get everything out of all the talent that he has. Remember, it took him a few years to get to Wimbledon. That's right. Yeah, my thing. He ducked it for and, and then that was the first major he ended up winning. Yep. <laughs> Beat Ivan Isovic in that five-set final. And then said the same thing. Why didn't I get out here earlier? Right. <laughs> well, that was the only time he's won Wimbledon. It was that, that one time. And here, as we showed you with those numbers, just absolutely dominant. Oh. One of the best matches, if not the best match of the year last year, was Agassi Safin. Semi-final. Safin won it in five. Legacy has got that that world famous name, but there's more to it than that because his game is so precise. He hits the ball hard, and it's a relatively risky game in a way. It makes it so much fun to watch him. Hits the ball early. The German holds, but he's down to break his serve at four games to three. Andre Agassi at this Australian Open day one. 
Agassi will serve with a break when we come back to Melbourne Park. Four games to three. Agassi with a break of serve. Pam Shriver's been roaming the ground, checking up on things on the outside courts. Now she has made her way to Rod Laver Arena. Well, Clithy, you know, I'm watching Agassi here, and I'm thinking about what are the greats of our game that have been able to play top tennis into their mid-30s? Of course, Rosewall played great tennis into his early 40s. Rosewall, Everett, Connors, Navratilova, and now Agassi. A couple things they have in common. None of them too big, and they all stayed fairly injury-free, which Agassi's been able to do for the most part, with the exception of maybe a wrist problem and a few other minor nicks. Thank you for that, Pam. This is pretty impressive when you talk about some of those greats and then you look at the Agassi numbers. Only player in ATP history to be ranked in the top ten in three different decades. You know, the other thing that they, they had in common that, Pam was talking about, uh, you know, incredibly fit and just determined and constantly keeping up, you know, in that fitness department and constantly working when they're away from the tour. Tell you this about Guys like Kenny Rosewall, though, he just loves tennis so much. He's to this day, Patrick, and I'm not kidding, he'll call up John Newcomb in Sydney and say, come on over, mate, let's have a knock. <laughs> yep, he always has his racket out there when you see him into Grand Slams. Yep. I guess he holds, and it's 5-3. I think, you know, Pam makes a real good point, though, about that the the stature of these players and that they're not too big because you know if you as you get older if you're real tall and you lumber around it gets that much tougher to, to keep that footwork going to keep that intensity well the body breaks down yeah. real quickly well, don't forget what uh, Stefan Edberg said last year when he was inducted into the Tennis Hall of Fame he said you know, people asked him about, well, what was your best shot? He you know, obviously had a great volley and serve and volley game, but he said what was most important to his game was his movement. Mm -hmm. He said tennis is a running sport. It's a running game. It's not a hitting game only. So anybody can stand there in the court and hit the ball well if you're at this level. The key is to be able to do it when you're on the run and keep moving. Agassi just moving him around. Uh, he um, just, side to side. He loves this court and these conditions. He can measure his shots and uh, takes that backhand down the line just when he sees that opening. Sets it up perfectly. This is not one of those oppressively hot days that uh, you usually, or you can find here and will do before this tournament's out. In fact, they're calling for much hotter weather toward the end of this week. But nevertheless, Kendallman is going to feel it. Yeah, he's feeling it already. 30 all. Court backhand again from Agassi opens up the court. Beautiful angle with this one right here. Takes it off the bounce. And then look at that great little footwork there. The little steps to get himself set up. Break point and set point. Mm, 
it's like sort of having the guy on the ropes and the jab and the jab and you know you've got the knockout punch and not using it just keeping Kindleman running working He's still sucking wind, Kindleman. Look at him, trying to catch his breath. That ace helps out. He's going to need a lot more of those. Yeah, two in a row is nice. Gentlemen holds. It's Martin Luther King Day back in the good old USA. And there are American fans in Australia as well. Hey, hey, Andre. Hey, America. Five for X. Rod Laver Arena hosting this Australian Open, first Grand Slam of the year. And here we go to Paris, London for Wimbledon, and then the great United States Open, Flushing Meadow. 5 4 Agassi serving for the first set in the first round. The opponent, Dieter Kendelman, qualifier from Germany. Agassi has been holding serve easily, he's lost just four points on his serve in this first set. Mid 30s in Agassi's case, and uh, early 20s for the German. So more than a decade separating these two. And Agassi's playing more and more guys. They keep saying uh, Agassi's is child their, was their childhood hero. Uh -huh. And Jeremy Coria, the young Argentine. He idolized Agassi. Kindleman. Uh, he played last year Thomas Burdick from the Czech Republic, who's who's one to watch in 2005, the last guy to beat Roger Federer at the Olympics. Well, Agassi was the world's number one in May 2003 when he was 33 years old. The oldest person ever. Set points. Agassi wins the first set. One break, but easier than that. He had more chances. Second set when we come back. Dieter Kindleman is a poor little rabbit right <laughs> yeah, he's, now. Yeah, he's been he's... running like a rabbit in this first set. <laughs> See whether that takes its toe here in the second as he starts. Uh, little serve to Agassi, first game, second if you like set. Those, if you like those mangoes, I mean, this is it. Come to Australia, best mangoes in the world down here. Love them. A little tidbit of info there, Cliff. I know you were wondering that. Oh. Kindleman, who was down 6-1, 3-1 in the last round of qualifying, is uh, in, in that respect fortunate to be here. But he made it, made the comeback, and here he faces Andre Agassi on Rod Laver Arena. Somehow I don't think he was uh, working quite as hard in that match as he got to in this first set against Agassi, physically. Oh. Oh, Playing Andre Agassi in a best of five set match is about as physically demanding as you can imagine for, well, for a player. He's never played a best of five set match. But, well, that, that too. I mean, I remember one year way back when, and I played Agassi in the third round of the French. Believe it or not, I actually won two matches on clay. I know you find that hard to believe. 
There I am winning the first round, you know, three and a half hours, four hours, something like that. Second round, I play Agassi, just get crushed in three straight sets. Uh, in about an hour and 40 minutes, absolutely exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because every single point, he's got you running. Drop shot has worked well for the gym. It has. Uh, 30 all. looking up at some of my friends who were watching this beating I was taking by Agassi. It was 6'2", six, 6'2", two, six, two, three love, something like that. I said, I'm, I'm like a human punching bag out here, just taking blow after blow. I'm not used to the sofa facing stuff from you, Patrick, because you won the, the, uh, you won the doubles, doubles here at the French. A little bit different. Thank you for bringing that up, though. Oh, a little. Oh, he had it. Just mm. clipped the tape. Yes. It's a shot Agassi was able to use when he when he won the French Open in '99. That drop shot worked very well for him on the red stuff. these two players carefully and see the difference in the uh, amount of territory that they have to cover with Agassi strokes the baseline doesn't get too far from the center either as for Kendallman he's just running all over the court break point Agassi yes. Ace number five one step German. that is not good though for Agassi Patrick is the uh, break points conversion. I mean, he's had 11 tries. Only broken once. Another chance. Return just gets on Kindleman so quickly. Agassi with that short backswing. He's barely finished his motion, and uh, the ball's on top of him. Oh, that's very good play from both of them. Agassi pointing to the mark on the baseline early in the point that he thought was long. One of the few times that Kindleman's been able to run Agassi around and he sets up his own backhand up the line there. Patrick, you talked earlier about how Agassi is not a natural born server and he's worked at it to where he's now a very efficient and effective server. The other thing that I like about his game is, you know, he was a pure two handed player at a certain time. Now he can take the, the one hand uh, off the rack and he can hit that slice off the backhand side. It's not his go to shot, but it just adds to his arsenal. Yeah, he's just been able to tinker with a few things, you know, improve that volley step back sometimes on the return of serve to give himself a little more room. A 
And that's where ooh, that ball was way out. Yeah, and that's where all that hard work that Agassi does pays off. Able to scramble and get that one back. The smile was for the lines person who didn't initially call it long and then did. It was way out that one. Break point number 13 in the match. For Agassi. Maybe he'll look to step around. Get a forehand here, although Kindleman's been going often up the middle on this second serve. Nope. Oh. Saves it again. Kinnerman holds, so we're even. He's making Agassi work here. Pam Shriver. Well, Cliffy, during the sit-down between the first and second set, I had a look at the two guys, and what a study of contrasts. Obviously, the two players, there's a lot to contrast anyway, but Kindleman went over there, looked exhausted, immediately put an ice bag on his neck, drank a lot more water. Andre looked like maybe warm-up was just completed. 42-minute uh, first set, nothing for him. Now, even though he didn't break serve there, Kindleman had to try and hold a 10-minute service game, which he did, but again, that will pay dividends later on in this set and match for Andre. Pretty much the story of it, and the other one is the break points that Agassi has not been able to convert. So one place from the from the back of the court where Agassi can be a little susceptible if you can get him running out wide to that forehand side. It's extremely tough to get Andre into that position consistently in baseline rallies. Nice little change up there from Andre in that first serve, kicking it out wide. It's a cheap point. He loves to use a wide serve on this surface because it opens a court up. It, it, this court, as we've been talking about, really takes a spin, and then he can start running his opponent right away. I mean, obviously, you're going to do it on any surface, but see that kick, he's got a little more bite on it on this rebound A surface. One apiece in the second set, first set to Agassi. One break, 6-4. Andre will go right back to work as, as Pam talked about, continuing to pressure that serve of Kindleman. Oh, that's just. Vintage Agassi right there, the Punisher <laughs> coming out. Darren Cahill. He's the killer. He's the killer Cahill, very solid player in his day from Australia, top 20 player. Done a great job with Agassi and he had a lot of 
tough shoes to fill after Gilbert had such a good run with Agassi for eight years. Well, there was speculation, wasn't there, that Roger Federer was waiting for Killer Cahill or, uh, because figuring that Agassi might retire one of these days, but that's not happened. None of those guys have said that. We've speculated about it, but Cahill's never said that. Federer's never said that. But we still like to say it. Get the oxygen out for this guy. Terrific recovery from Agassi in the middle of that point as well. Boy, he moves well. Like in uh, in football, sometimes you see the guys go into the, in the sidelines and they get the oxygen. You know, when they get the <laughs> tanks out there. You gonna need this for this guy. You gonna do that in tennis? You gotta run a lot more out here than on the football field. It's not as dangerous, but break points. Desperate measure there from Kindleman. Agassi gets the first break of the second set. He's got the first set and he leads two games to one. He'll serve. Drop down to number 16 in the rankings. So dominant for so long. In the men's and women's last year. Agassi's speaking of dominant. He's been dominant on his serve. He's been cruising. Losing just seven points. Pam Shriver was saying it earlier that um, Agassi just shows no. I've been out there for how long now? Been 50, nearly an hour. Shows no signs of any fatigue. I mean, he's just as fresh as a daisy. Dieter, on the other hand, <laughs> wilting a little bit. Davis Cup captain Patrick McAdoo. When are you going to take on coaching one of these great players, Patrick? Um, not in the near future. How's that for an answer? I got to hang out with you. I got to keep you company up here. Hey, are you trying, trying to get rid of me? No, just looking at all the people that need a coach. You know? <laughs> well, there's been a few changes in the coaching ranks. The coaching carousel. Killer, of course, still with Agassi. Federer. Now Tony Roach will be with him part time. Andy Roddick. Moving to Dean Goldfine. Robbie Ginepri now uh, will be working with Francisco Montana. Taylor, Taylor Dent also. Also with Taylor Dent, uh, part of the USTA program. Marty Fish going with Todd Martin. He's not here, but he's going to be working quite a bit with Marty Fish this year. In fact, they spent some time already together down in Florida. So Todd moving into the coaching ranks as well. And uh, Sebastian Grosjean, the Frenchman, back with Brad Stein, who uh, coached Courier all those years. Back in the mix, so good to see him back. Set up here from Kindleman. Routine volley there. Spending too much time in net, though. Well, Dieter, just two of three. Obviously, he's the one who's going to wilt first. Agassi in superb physical condition again for this first slam in Melbourne, where physical conditioning is so important. Most important, Patrick, or of the slams? You know, I think they're all, obviously, they're all, in, uh, probably the French is the most important as far as. Except the weather's the, really It's cooler cool. there. Yeah, I've, uh, a lot of challenges here, no, no doubt, and the matches. Uh, just can be extremely grueling. I and mean, the U.S. Open being a bit faster, you know, the points generally a little bit quicker. 
Well, I think there's just there's also been here in Australia the, a, a lot of guys that can sneak through the draw over the years because it's the first event of the year. I mean, there's players don't have that many matches under their belts and maybe they were slightly injured in the off season. Maybe they needed an extra break and took some more time off. But Agassi, you know. Oh, hello. Oh. Break point Agassi oh. for an insurance break in the second. Absolutely ripped that return. But Agassi loves that time off, that stretch that he can really do the work off the, off the court. And he, because he's such a great ball striker, he doesn't really need as many matches as a lot of other players. If he's doing the fitness and doing the work off the court, the game is pretty much always there. matches going on all over this uh, complex here but it's Andre Agassi in action and this Rod Lever arena is jammed. Yes. Punisher. Yeah. It's a nice big cut. You know, the, when Agassi does all his work early in the match, when he hits all those body blows, just things start to open up for him. You know, all of a sudden those openings get a little bit bigger as the opponent starts to lose a step and gives up in a few points. Just, and that's always been a big part of his strategy, particularly down here. Where he, can, he can really dictate, you know, the rally so much here. Game point. There's that slice back end that you like, Cliff, that yeah. Agassi's been able to add. But having said all that, uh, Patrick, uh, Dieter has actually put up a pretty he good has. show. Yeah, Dieter's I mean, played he's, well. He's not wilted. He hasn't, he hasn't looked disappointed or disgusted. He's still giving it everything he's got. Well, considering it's his first appearance ever in a slam, and playing his childhood hero, Agassi, on center court. Played very well. Oh. Considering what we've seen so far in the first round, Serena one and one, Federer one, one and two over Centoro. It's surprising, pretty even in the match differential department. Sometimes numbers do lie. Kendall holes. three games to two. Agassi's got the Braves. Mm. Good info for you. Numbers are declining because of, of tree logging here. 15, long. 15 to Agassi. He's got the break in the second, leading three games to two. Agassi continuing to just roll on serve. He's number five. And he's trying to play quickly. Kindleman trying to slow him down. Oh, I guess he oh. not bothered at all. 71% now for Agassi in the first serve percentage department. Well, he'd like to keep those numbers. Oh. Some major heat there from Andre. Oh, he went for it on the second serve. Give me a little smile from Agassi. 
Who am I, my old uh, competitor, Pete Sampras? <laughs> 24 of 27 on the first serve. Agassi holds and he's got a four game to two lead. You're watching day one of the Australian Open. This is the first Grand Slam of the year, 100 year anniversary that they're enjoying in Melbourne. You're watching Andre Agassi take on Dieter Kindelman. Kindelman is from Germany, 22 years old. Agassi winning the first set, one break of serve. He's up one break in the second, 4 2. He's had a lot of chances to break, but has converted only twice. 15, in fact. Chris Drysdale here, Patrick McEnroe alongside, Pam Shriver's at courtside. Kindleman 2 4 serving. Well, Agassi, the best news for him is that his movement has looked exceptional today. And of course, that was a big question mark for him after injuring that, that hip slightly in the warm up tournament here, an exhibition against Andy Roddick. It was 6 5 in the first set, and Agassi said he felt something on the return of serve off the forehand side. He just felt a little something in the hip, and then he went to serve the next game and felt it tighten up, so he decided to, to stop the match to be extremely cautious got an MRI the following day it turned out it was just a, a micro tear in one That's of the tendons yeah, and a tendon not in the muscle so that alleviated a lot of fear in Agassi that he could damage anything a little bit more and watch how he's moving yeah, here, no, he's, so there's nothing damaged now no he's absolutely fine and extraordinary speed for this 34 year old 1530. Ah! You see now Kindleman just uh, stretching and lunging a little bit more during the rallies. The footwork is not quite as crisp. And I guess he's looking to open up a huge lead now with the second break. Andre Agassi's got a couple of breaks now in the second set. That should spell doom for Germany's Kendelman. Agassi will serve the second to back. Agassi with a huge lead now. Two breaks in the second set. He won the first. Americans have always been really popular down under. Australia's almost like another state of the United States in a way. Cannot think, though, of any um, athlete that has been more popular down under in Australia than Agassi. And uh, of course the tennis tradition, the tennis family from the US have been traveling down here for years, going all the way back to Tony Trabert, vexatious. <laughs> then you had the Arthur Ashe, Stan Smith era, the Connors. Your brother, John McEnroe, Courier Chang, Sampras. Well, my brother and Connor didn't come down here too much at all. In those days, uh, Australian Open really lacked the luster of the other majors. When they made the switch in the mid 80s to go to the to this big arena, brand new state of the art facility and leave Kuyung, which was a private club just in the outskirts of Melbourne and put this surface down and move the date from December to the beginning of January. And, uh, you know, if you build it, they will come. The players started coming, and now it's right up on par with the other majors. Yeah, there hasn't been a top player in years who said, I'm just going to skip it. They, they, some haven't shown, but only because right, of injury. injury yeah. Well, they used to just skip it. I guess he always likes to have the ball kids in their their position, wherever that's supposed to be. Well, 
Well, Dieter, welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking, yeah. he's going to be calling Munich tonight and say, Mom, my legs I are heavy. Yeah, man. Yeah, my legs are heavy tonight. <laughs> Set point. I didn't run quite this much when I won those two challengers last year. <laughs> And he's thinking, I got another set to go. Yeah. Set point again. Third set point for Agassi. Oh, wow, two doubles in this game. Agassi had only one coming into this game. And a bit of loss of concentration. Another double fault. So here's the first chance of the match for Dieter to break Agassi. Meanwhile, Agassi's broken him three times, 16 chances. Well, Agassi's just given him the chance in this game with three doubles. Yeah, Dieter's running out of steam quickly. He's not looking to chase balls down the way he was in the first set and a half. Directing the ball boys again, Agassi. Yeah, I think he's too worried about them right now. He's lost a little focus. Double four. it is again. I mean, he's like, spending so much time talking to the ball kids. It's not the sun. It's not in his eyes. And the break is served, Pam. Well, Cliff, two games ago, two service games ago of Agassi, he started to go for bigger serves all of a sudden, one out wide, you guys commented on it. It seems to me, once he started to go for the bigger serve, he's lost some rhythm. I mean, that last game, extraordinary for Agassi, since his service percentage and his service wins on first serve have been so high, why he would kind of in the middle of this match, he's winning routinely, would change up what he wants to do on serve. Seemed a little strange to me. So Dita gets the break and it's 5-3 Agassi. Second set, Agassi one set to none. Gondre just lost his concentration. He just he's almost like he got bored out there. I mean, four double faults in one game, bizarre. And Pam, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's no reason for him to go for big second serves. It's not like the guy's punishing his, his serve at all. Oh. Why well, do you like to get that insurance break you know, in case? You know, I guess he used to go through sets where he'd lose his, his focus. Now, he usually doesn't let it carry over too long when he loses a bit of focus. Oh. 
more set points now for Agassi this time. Kendallman's serve. Look at all those chances he's had. Amazing that it's this close. 16 opportunities. Australians know how to throw a party, and Andre Agassi is throwing one here on Rod Laver Arena. He's got two sets to none. That's set here, two sets to Agassi relatively easily, and he has got uh, love 43 break chances here. Sounds like those guys don't think Suzuki's going to motor on much more. It does not sound <laughs> no, that way, no, and uh, that was a great call there from Brad as well saying that it's going to be a tough match. Who is not going to have a tough match against Phil? <laughs> Game to Agassi, and this is now... The slow torture is, seems like it's going to be a lot quicker in this set because Agassi has now got a two-game to love lead, and while he's in the shade, it's his German opponent that needs to be in the shade now. Plenty of shade in that locker room. You'll, you'll be getting, they'll be getting enough there pretty quickly, I think. There's that backhand cross court that Brad was talking about, and Agassi really unloading on that one and. Kindleman just not quite able to get there with his body and getting good enough position and balance. And that's so important when the ball's coming at you with that much pace. Get your body weight in balance. I guess he reminds me of a marathon runner. You know, why would you run a marathon? It's hard, you get tired, but it's just, it's one of those things that, that people love to do to test your body, take it to the limits. And that's what Agassi does in preparing for an event like this. And as he says, he enjoys the process. I also think, Patrick, that he loves tennis in and of itself. And I think that that he heads this sort of conglomerate. I mean, he's, he's been so successful in the sport that he owes something to the sport to stay in it in his own mind. Well, as he says, it's given him so much. I mean, it's really given him everything he has and the ability to do all these meaningful things away from the game. But, uh, he feels a commitment to, to be this focused, to be this professional every time he shows up. He and Gil Reyes, his trainer, meticulous in their preparation. See, I think Gil has a lot to do with oh, his longevity. Definitely. Not only physically, but mentally. Well, Gil says he's stronger now than he was at 25. In better shape, his body fat's lower, his endurance is better. And in a young man's game, more and more, that, that in and of itself is remarkable. Agassi. Wins the first game, make that. Melbourne's weather has welcomed this first day of the first Grand Slam as Andre Agassi taking on Dieter Kindelman of Germany, and he's not had a tough time. We're in Rod Laver Arena, and Kindelman is serving down three games to love, and two sets to none. Andre Agassi has won every Grand Slam title. He's 34, soon to go 35-year-old, taking on 22-year-old German. There are a lot of thoughts going through Andre Agassi's mind last year when the losses were coming in bunches. The first few months of the year. Loses to Marty Fish, he loses to Augustine Caleri. You know, guys that he certainly wasn't used to going down to. And French Open, he goes out to a 
and unknown even in his own country in France. But he continued to work and he continued to do the off-court training and preparation. Skipped Wimbledon with the injury. And then in the summer hardcourt season, things started to turn around for Agassi. Monster win for him in, in Cincinnati where he took out Roddick in a third set tie break. That match was at night, Saturday night. Comes back the next afternoon to play Leighton Hewitt. You think, oh, maybe Andre will be a little bit fatigued. And he takes out Hewitt in, in three sets in the final. And that rekindled his, uh, his spirit, I think, and his hope and a good run in New York before Federer took him out in five sets. And all of a sudden, I think it was then that Agassi started to say, okay, let's gear up for 2005. I mean, remember when Agassi left here last year, Cliff, when he lost that great match to Safin? He walked around, he waved to the crowd, and there was a little, there was a sense, I think, in this stadium that then maybe this is it. Maybe Agassi won't be back. Six three in the fifth set he went down to Saffin last year. Guess what? He's back and uh, very good looking start for Agassi here this year. He won Cincinnati over Andy Roddick, Carlos Moy in the quarterfinals, and Leighton Hewitt in the championship match. American Express match summary. Agassi now. See the winners have gone up in this uh, third set. He's pulled away. Enforced errors, 23. Oh, no. easy one. Agassi just took his eye off of it. American Express is donating 100 Australian dollars to the Kids Tennis Foundation for every ace that's served here on this Rod Laver Arena. We'll be, we'll be updating the uh, amounts daily for you. There's a hundred. There's 1,400 so far out of this match. Eight aces for Agassi. Again, the kick serve out wide. And Agassi, that's a shot he's made the norm in the men's game, in the women's game as well now, taking it out of the air, the swinging volley. You like, you like that shot now, Cliff? Is you be, you're still not a big fan of it, or you, have you come around? Still not a big fan of it. <laughs> Um, unless you got Agassi's game. All right. Well, Federer might, likes it. Oh, he's got every shot. <laughs> Still got that little old school in you, Cliff. You know. A little bit left. Yeah. yeah, me and Federer. <laughs> Agassi holds it. Five games to love and two sets to none. Just a matter of minutes now until he closes out this first round match in front of a whole crowd of people. Agassi a game away from wrapping this up. Our Pacific life between the lines. Well, so much for the suspect hip. Agassi has been moving beautifully, defending there nicely. The volley into the open court. And points like that is really what started to wear Kindleman down. Kindleman serving here, trying to drop shot. Look at the great hustle, the scramble from Agassi. And the easy volley winner. As the openings have gotten bigger for Andre, our Pacific life between the lines. Obviously, the rematch between Agassi and Federer would be the match the world will be most interested in during this first slam.
For the Australians, the dream matchup is Leighton Hewitt and someone. The winners from Agassi. 20 off the ground. Good serving day for him, except for that one game when he threw in the four doubles. Ten service winners. Just a reminder that this young German's idol is Andre Agassi. There he is playing in front of a full stadium in a Grand Slam tournament. Oh, wild second serve, double number five. Match point. Big moment here for this young German to shake the hand of his idol. Smile from Andre. But a straight set win. 6-4, six, 6-3, six, six love for Akasi over Dieter Kindleman. Uh, anything you've seen today, day one, that would suggest how the potential matchup between this man, Agassi, and the world's number one Federer would turn out, Patrick? Well, it would be a whole lot of fun, I can guarantee you that. But, uh, you know, Agassi knows that uh, he's got to go for his shots a little more than he's used to against Federer. He did that at the U.S. Open and took Federer to five. But it's a good teaser, a good test for Agassi. Got through it easily and uh, moves on comfortably. Agassi in straight sets. He's in round two of the Oz Open. Dragasi came down here ready to play at the Australian Open. Again, he's won it four times. Easy win first round against Dieter Kindleman, and he's now downstairs with Aaron Pam Schreiber. Well, thanks, Cliff. Andre, pretty good solid first round match. Yeah. How do you assess it, and how's the hip? Yeah, well, uh, the hip held up. You know, I mean, I um, it was a bit of a concern a few days ago, to say the least, and I've done a lot of the right things over the last few days, and I pushed through anything I was feeling, and it seemed to, seemed to get better, so that, that's a good thing. And you know, when you never played somebody before, it's always sort of a bit precarious out there. You're, you know, trying to get your feel, understand what the guy does well and what he doesn't. And, uh, you know, I felt like I did that pretty early. I nestled into the work and uh, found myself getting better as the match went on. Well, it's the first day of the Australian Open, the first day of major tennis. On the men's side, Federer has dominated the majors. How much thought have you put into how to dent him? Well, yeah, you listen, everybody sort of makes you, uh, makes you raise your game out here. And he certainly is... Uh, been uh, given a whole new standard to, to the game right now and we need to figure out a way to deal with it but the good news is if you do play him you only have to play him once in that tournament so uh, I'll have to worry about that when I get to it but uh, listen he forces you to play a perfect match and that's what that's what champions do well your wife did that to us a few yeah. years ago <laughs> well done today Andre thanks, thanks. Cliff thank you Pam so the four-time winner here Andre Agassi very easily threw and he is in round two. We're going to take a break now from our coverage from Melbourne Park of this first Grand Slam of the year. A lot happening. Busy day. We'll fill you in.